Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question. This is related to the system interactions section on the NPTE. So we've got a great question coming up for you. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder that we are hosting a free one day NPTE prep seminar. This is in Chicago on November 18th. So if you are anywhere close or can get close, to Chicago on November 18th. You can sign up for that free session. It's an all-day event. It's sponsored by Athletico and Pivot, a great regional PT company. Uh, they'll be running that. It's, again, November 18th in Chicago. You can register for that. Just go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. It is free registration, but slots are extremely limited. So, again, if you can get to Chicago on November 18th, the course is free. They provide parking, meals, and uh, even some gas money, I think. So this is something you definitely don't want to miss out. Go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast to be able to sign up for that. So as I'm recording this, we're just getting through the October 2023 administration. So as you know, October 2023, that was the conclusion of the 2023 content outline. And so starting in 2024, the content outline has shifted somewhat. And so we've talked about that. We talked about that in the last episode about how they are introducing more and more scenario-based items on exam day. And so really all that means that you'll need to parse through a bit more information in order to find what you need to answer the question. So I know that typically writing a standalone question, all of the content contained in the question is relevant to answering the question. And so fairly straightforward as you consider, all right, as I'm answering a standalone question, I need to make sure that my answer accounts for all of the information contained therein. The difference with scenario items is that you'll have a much larger scope of data to comb through and then your specific question will be rele relevant only to a small part of the case. So in a sense, you do need to parse through things that, not to say that they are distractors, but they are true patient case scenarios. So for instance, like the, the, the question we're going to go through today is about medications. One of the questions could be about, you know, what is the, what is the effect of this medication and not that medication? Or in a sense, you need to make sure to account for the critical information rela related or relevant to that specific question. So that being said, that's one of the big changes for 2024 is the addition of scenario-based items. So today we'll be going through a practice question. This is related to the system interactions section on the exam. So according to the new content outline, again, this is all updated for 2024, the system interactions section will have somewhere between eight and 10 questions on it. So this is typically re related, or I guess I should say exclusively related to differential diagnosis, evaluation, and prognosis. So in a sense, you are taking evaluative data or trying to make some type of dif differential diagnosis based on something that is affecting multiple systems. So again, trying to show that in the question today. Uh, all told, the grand total number of scored items on test day is coming down to 180 scored items with 225 total meaning that there are 45 unscored and 180 that are scored. All that to say, the proportions remain fairly similar in that cardio, musculo, and neuro continue to be the largest systems on the exam. But as we go through this, this session, as well as other future podcasts, we will again be going through the FSBPT's content outline, trying to display and demonstrate all the things that are likely to show up on test day. Now, of note, in these podcast episodes, we'll have a hard time going through a full case because, again, a scenario-based item requires that you see a full patient chart and then you have to reread it and reread it about five times in order to find the relevant data. And again, that's why they reduce the number of questions is because it takes more time to go through a full scenario. So on the podcast, it's unlikely we'll do a ton of scenario-based material. However, we will try to post that in our, not only in our free stuff, but also in our YouTube videos, things like that, where you'll be able to find some examples of scenario-based items. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question here. So as we talk about this, 74-year-old patient who underwent a total hip arthroplasty seven days ago is receiving outpatient physical therapy. The patient is currently prescribed furosemide, or Lasix, as a concomitant, for a concomitant diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Which of the following adverse effects is the patient most likely to experience during exercise intervention as a result of the furosemide? So again, we've got a 74-year-old patient underwent a total hip arthroplasty seven days ago, receiving outpatient physical therapy. 
patient is currently prescribed furosemide Lasix for a concomitant diagnosis of congestive heart failure. Which of the following adverse effects is the patient most likely to experience during these during the exercise intervention as a result of the furosemide? Option one, blurred vision, presence of halos. Two, bradycardia with irregular heartbeat, arrhythmias. Three, drop in systolic blood pressure when rising to a standing position. Or four, strong headache with exercise, gastrointestinal upset. So we've got one, blurred vision, presence of halos. Two, bradycardia with irregular heartbeat, arrhythmias. Three, drop in systolic blood pressure when rising to a standing position. And four, strong headache with exercise, gastrointestinal upset. All right, so this question is asking pretty specifically about the effects or the adverse effects related to furosemide, especially in the presence of a total hip arthroplasty and congestive heart failure. All that to say that the correct answer is that drop in systolic blood pressure when rising to a standing position. This is, in a sense, this is the definition of orthostatic hypotension, a drop of 20 points or 20 millimeters of mercury in your systolic blood pressure when rising from supine to sitting or sitting to standing, something where you have a change. So again, implicit in the name orthostatic, meaning that as you change position, that you would have some change or have hypotension related to that change in position. So one of the primary adverse effects of furosemide or Lasix, this is a loop diuretic. What it does, is it prevents the resorption of fluid back into the kidneys. And so in a sense, you're peeing off all of your sodium and chloride. All that to say that it also tends to dilute or, or take out all of the water-soluble uh, vitamins, include well, uh, water-soluble minerals. Uh, typically, we're talking about the electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and calcium. So you do tend to lose a lot of that. And so that could relate, could result in uh, muscle cramping. That is a possibility, again, very much related to like a Charlie horse type thing when you have a, an electrolyte imbalance. But the point is that the primary effect is going to be that drop in blood volume, which could result in a, a, a result in the orthostatic hypotension. Also of note, related to the total hip arthroplasty, very often, and not, not all the time, but very often there is blood loss associated with a major surgery like total hip arthroplasty, which again could result in hypovolemia. So all things taken in consideration, you'd need to be ex especially careful of orthostatic hypotension in the presence of Lasix. Now of note also in this question, the patient is also, they also have congestive heart failure. So congestive heart failure, that congestion, a lot of the, or one of the primary ways to remove that excess congestion or excess fluid buildup is via some type of diuretic like furosemide or Lasix. These other options, blurred vision, presence of halos, bradycardia with irregular heartbeat arrhythmias, or a strong headache with exercise and gastrointestinal upset, all of these are adverse effects related specific, specifically to digoxin. So in a sense, this question is asking you specifically about the effects of furosemide. If you're asking about the effects of digoxin, which again could be prescribed in the case of congestive heart failure, uh, this is one of the cardiac glycosides. Its job is to have a positive, uh, or I guess it, its job is to reduce heart rate and improve contractility of the heart. And so therefore, one of the effects would be bradycardia just by, by nature of the, of the medication of the cardiac glycoside of digoxin or digitalis. So in any case, these ones, digitalis, digoxin, the cardiac glycosides tend to result in central nervous system disorders, gastrointestinal upset, strong headaches can also occur, as well as bradycardia, irregular heartbeats, and arrhythmias. These are all related to the digitalis or cardiac glycosides. So again, back to the question, the question asks specifically about what are the effects that they'll likely experience as a result of the furosemide, Lasix. Uh, so the correct answer was the, the orthostatic hypotension. Uh, other things that could occur with the furosemide or Lasix would be weakness, again, related to hypovolemia, fatigue, muscle cramps, that loss of electrolytes, mood changes. All of these are your classic side effects related to furosemide. Whereas digitalis or digoxin, which could also be prescribed here, it's going to result in the bradycardia, arrhythmias, uh, the gastrointestinal upset, the central nervous system disorders, the headaches and halos. All of that would be related primarily to digitalis or digoxin. So there you go. A system interactions question. This is talking about someone who had a total hip arthroplasty, but also has congestive heart failure. What are the effects of the medications on that patient? And I would definitely log away as far as ones to remember, Lasix or furosemide, which is a strong diuretic, also known as the, uh, the water pill. 
So any of you who've had patients, they will often refer to it as the water pill because it makes them go to the bathroom about every 20 minutes while they're on it. And it's uh, it gets them lots of exercise. I tell patients that is the upside to taking a water pill. The downside is that it can result in hypovolemia. It can be very annoying. There's just lots, lots of, uh, I guess you could say, adverse effects to Lasix as well. So there you go. That's your question today about system interactions. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got as you go through the FSBPT content outline for 2024. Also, be sure if you want to join us for that free one-day event in Chicago. That is, again, November 18th. That's a Saturday. You won't want to miss that. Seats are extremely limited, so you'll want to register for that right away. And the best way to register for that is going to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. So in the meantime, stay safe, happy studying. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.